150 episodes had been out with the drunken peasants. During its run, the peasants trashed the stupidest politicians the country had to offer. And after seeing how many crazy people were now roaming the streets, we're finally opening up a mental home for these individuals. Footage which would now be used in the newly minted Crazy People segment. TJ, Ben, and TJ's brother had been hosting the show as its legs grew, and this podcast would become a show the fans would grow to love. It had been a long road getting from there to here, but times were about to change as one of the most common guests, Paul's ego, was about to join the show as the show's fourth host. Drunken peasants would never be the same, for better or for worse. The screen is fucking laggy Ben's across the room and he's fucking laughing at me It ain't my fault that I'm fat I was poor as a kid and I have a bad back Paul Zigo was an atheist YouTuber from the earlier days of YouTube who very infrequently posted videos, some good and many cringeworthy. Hello, tube asses. I had a bad day today. Constant nicotine fit. I thought I'd make a video about it. Any of you have one of those guys at your work that just can't keep his fucking mouth shut? Constantly talking over you, constantly has something to add to everything that you say? Well, I do. His name is Alan. His name is Alan. He had also been a fan of Brett Keen and became known as a Brett Keen historian who the peasants would bring on many times when discussing the manatee. He had guest starred many times, and fans universally loved Paul. Ben reached out to Paul, and it was announced that he would become the fourth official host, now appearing each Friday on Drunken Peasants. Though, as the salt crisis continued, Paul would appear more frequently, and eventually was on every episode of DP, either Skyping or appearing in studio. This would start on episode 151. Oh, hey, Paul, can I can I go ahead and announce that shit that we talked about? Uh, yeah, dude, if you want to. Oh, man, this is a huge announcement. All right, so this is... This, this is, is huge. Huge. It's going to be huge. Dude, the chat is going to blow up when we, when we make all this. Right, all right, all right, all uh, right. Paul is now going to be a recurring guest on the show every Friday Yay! from here until he gets sick of us, and, and that's that. Yes, so once a week, Paul's Ego. Paul's Ego, Wacky Fridays. Wacky Fridays <laughs> with uh, Paulie Zigo. And if you're wondering how he got such a great deal, it's because he sucked TJ's dick. <laughs> he sucked my cock. He thought he was flossing his teeth, <laughs> oh. to, to be fair. The biggest thing Paul brought to the show was story time with Paul. Story time with Paul. Paul had a natural talent for telling stories. Many stories were of Paul's childhood, such as Paul breaking his dad's trumpet, Paul trolling on CB radio, his porn magazine racket, and Paul's car getting stolen and him being kidnapped. Eventually, they, the, the car stopped, and I was told to get out of the car. And at this point, I thought, okay, they're going to shoot me, uh, because I look up, and I'm literally in the middle of nowhere. There's farmland to the right, empty farmland to the left. The only light that I can see at this point is the moon. Um, it's November, it's very cold outside. And uh, so I get out of the car and I'm standing there and the guy uh, with the gun walks around to my side of the car and he levels, at, levels the gun at me, standing a, you know, a few feet away. And he says, strip, motherfucker. Now, at this point, what went through my mind is I'm getting raped and then killed, which, <laughs> oh, is, God. which is fantastic. Um, what a way to go out. Uh, and I, I said, everything. And he said, yeah, everything. So I proceed to strip off all of my clothes, my, my hat, my, my, my 
pants, my underwear, my socks, my shoes, everything. He says, throw all your clothes in the back seat. This was a huge hit with the peasants' fan base, but Paul would apparently run out of stories he felt were good to tell. Letting down the fans and story time with Paul would become a segment few and far between. Rage Feed had launched many episodes before Paul joined the Drunken Peasants. This spin-off channel by the Peasants was focused on streaming gaming content, where Ben played games like Star Trek Online, Star Wars The Old Republic, and many other games. The channel was originally a backup channel when DP was affected by copyright strikes for streaming, but had been converted into this purpose. Streams had stopped, but picked up for a bit after this time, but still to this date not much has been done with the Rage Feed channel. Devin Tracy had accused Jacqueline of being the human centipede of atheism, just repeating talking points others had made. Well, that wasn't true, as Jacqueline would be out it for just taking the content of other YouTubers, being exposed when she plagiarized Theoretical Bullshit's video on Kim Davis, where she just repeated many lines from the video in hers. Let me try and paint a picture for you. Okay, so, so Kim Davis goes to the DMV but the office manager won't authorize the renewal of her driver's license because he's a Muslim and can't in good conscience approve of a woman driving. What if she decided to get a driver's license and she went to the DMV and the person working there happened to be a Muslim? Kim Davis knows a thing or two about the sanctity of marriage because she's on her fourth one. Not to mention the fact that she made babies with the man who would become husband number three while she was still married to husband number one, but that's not the point, it's not the point. Kim Davis has been married Four times. She got pregnant with a baby from husband number three while somehow she was still married to husband number one. I'll let you guys figure that out. The community was in an uproar as she appeared on episode 158 to defend herself. The peasants would voice how disappointed they were in her and TJ would ask her if there were any more instances of plagiarism. Well, the thing is, is people have accused me of it before with a Facebook comment that I admitted to and then went back and credited. Um, as far as videos and stuff, like I, I this is not like I, I, this is not something that I do. Like I do not watch people's videos and like write down what they say and repeat them. That's ridiculous. Right, because um, you would have been caught before if you were doing that. Well, many, many more came out shortly after. JF created a video series exposing her and examining the claims of plagiarism against her. This incident would have many turn their backs on Jacqueline and her relations with the peasants and other atheists would severely decline. She would, however, appear on DP in the future, but there was always a portion of the DP fanbase that would flip shit. DP would have another falling out with Dave Creator, the creator of the Drunken Peasants intro. The peasants would stop using his intro, and a new one was created for episode 171, which was far better than what had been seen before, and this intro is still currently being used today. The claim that DP made early on in its run where they were ending the coverage of Brett Keane was a complete lie, as throughout classical peasantism, Brett was constantly covered. Brett recently had been demanding to debate TJ, and the peasants were interested in having Brett on to talk about his past and his scandals. Brett had crazy stipulations to appear on DP as if he was a top-notch celebrity, including only TJ could appear in this episode. This was TJ's response. And then I may right. forgive you. I, I've made my decision. Um, my decision is fuck you, Brett. You fuck go, you, bitch. You go right on ahead making your little exposés. I'll tell you what, Brett. I'll, I got a counter offer for you. Why don't you come on with me and Ben and Scotty and Paul and I'll fucking talk to you. Yeah, Brett. How you about know, that? Why don't you come and fucking face us all? Brett Keen, the stallion, in the if flesh. The truth, if the truth is truly on your side, then you'll prevail even when the numbers game is against you. And you know what? I'm sure I'm sure Ben will probably keep his mouth shut for the most part. I bet even Scotty will probably keep his mouth shut for the most part. And You know what? And, and Brett, until then, enjoy, gonna... lang enjoy languishing in abject obscurity as every once in a while a motorist driving down the lonely Missouri interstate stops to rubberneck at the train wreck that is your fucking YouTube channel. Brett on episode 166 finally appeared to talk with the peasants. The hosts and Brett hashed it out on many scandals and issues on both sides. Brett had difficulty dodging questions, and his legendary dodges throughout the episode were long remembered as having a French vanilla situation as Brett kept going to the bathroom throughout the episode, breaking a world record most likely. To a site 
created by you, where you claim that the lyri- that you had written the lyrics to a song that you had not written the lyrics to, a song by the band Him. I don't remember the exact song. All right, I'm back. All right, did you hear that? I uh, just got back. Sorry. No, I will suggest for you right now, do not put French vanilla in your coffee. Okay, <laughs> right. Good advice. Uh, sure. No French vanilla for you, TJ. Hashtag we were there grew out of this episode, as fans wanted to be known for being present for this special episode of DP. I'm, I'm glad I get to participate in such an event. I was there. Remember that time Brett Keane went on the Drunken Peasants and made a fucking dumbass of himself in front of thousands and thousands of people? I was there, man. I, I smoked a fat joint and I watched that shit and I typed LOL like 2,800 times in the chat. Brett shortly after his appearance would pack bags yet again and partially leave YouTube, stating he was ending his religion and political videos to focus on his gaming channel on Games You Love. As with every one of Brett's departures from YouTube, this one would last only so long. Jim Ass would still make appearances, and it became quite clear that not all liked Paul, as the two commonly fought. No. Hashtag Jim Ass DDoSed Paul. Hashtag Jim Ass DDoSed Paul. You know what, you cowardly piece of fucking shit? You can't DDoS me in real life, okay? When we meet face to face, you're mine. <laughs> Your fucking ass is mine, you piece of shit. Oh, wow. I'm gonna DDoS you in your mouth, you motherfucker. Alright, well, come get some. Put him, put him up on screen. Let him have at it for a while. <coughs> Alright. Why, why such animosity between you guys? What happened? Yeah, I mean, like, what's the deal here? Is there some kind of dark origin story, or is this, like, hate at first sight kind of thing? I mean, what is this? He prefers well, I be a catcher, and I told him I'm a pitcher. That's all there is to it. That's really Right, good. yeah. Oh, yeah that's it, Jim. <laughs> That's it. it. It couldn't be that I have absolutely zero respect for some fucking trust fund baby who buys his way onto the peasants. You know, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's it. I don't. Maybe I'm crazy. So you don't think? Hey, I've got money. That's why I don't catch. Hey, that's. Well, what else can I say? I don't know what else can hey, you say, Jim. Could you do me a favor, Jim? Do us all a favor. In fact, do the fucking planet a favor. And the next time you're drinking and you and you reach that point where you're like, man, man I better stop or I'm going to get alcohol poisoning. Just keep drinking. Keep drinking until you lose consciousness. And make sure you do it in a place where nobody knows where you're at. Dude, at this point, not drinking is more toxic to Jim ass. On episode 170, Jim Ass would reveal a masterpiece he created on the show known as Dinor, which would become a very popular drunken peasant shirt. Who's the dinosaur? What? So there's a crude drawing of a dinosaur in here now? Is that the same guy? I think that's Jim Ass. That's Jim Ass. Oh, oh you finally got to, you finally stopped uh, the the whole HP media smart bullshit, huh? Hey, look, yeah, Jim, yeah, Jim Ass sure. figured out how to, how, to, how to put a crayon drawing up for his fucking picture. Congrats, Jim Did Ass. You, hey, hey, Paul, hey, come next on. Next thing you know, next thing you know, you'll be wiping your own ass and, and, and pissing in the Jim, toilet like a big boy. Look, Paul, yeah, Jim is, Jim is our make-a-wish, all right? I come on. Already. What do you yeah. mean crayon? That's a, that's a dinosaur. Jim Ass is part of our, uh, you know, Amazing Atheist Reaches Out to Retards program. <laughs> it pairs the Amazing Atheist with one and, retard know, every week. Right. And, you know, he gets to come on the show, and he gets to draw his little dinosaur, and we're supposed to fucking be nice to that's, him, that's, Paul. That's a good dinosaur, Sorry. Jim. You're supposed to compliment the fucking dinosaur. It looks like just like Sorry, whatever a, you're going a, for. It is a great dinosaur. Thank you. Jim. Sorry, Thank Jim. You grown, grown up Thank talk. You. It is a beautiful dinosaur. It looks just Thank like a dino or there. Yeah. Dinor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good dinor. Dino R. Yeah. Thank you. That's sweet. Thank you, guys. Drama was brewing behind the scenes yet again, and DP would hold a new rap battle on episode 179. Here, G-Man would be back to reclaim the title after being cheated out of a win against Creationist Cat. His opponent, JF. JF had a pretty decent rap. Then your brain waves may finally allow scientists to elude how it feels to get on in your own language by a French white dude. Just turn you into French cuisine, but expect no reduction of heat. Huh. 
I will always be as relentless as I was on this sick mid-90s beat. Yeah, the only way to seek cover from my wrathful rhapsody <laughs> would be for you to get adopted as part of Brett King's family. Damn! Oh shit! Drop the fucking mic, bitch! Get him out! Get out, G-Man! Just get out! Walk! Well, G-Man, well... My name is G-Man and I'm gonna rock this show To show this french fry who don't got no flow Try to keep up, you cocky french hoe Pull up your pants, I see camel toes You're a doofus with bloopers, you're my number one fan Your brain cells are gone, stop smoking that pan Go buy a pickle with a nickel or I'll shoot you with a missile Because you're too stupid to cut me with a sickle Learn to speak English, you're in G-Man's nation You better call Brett for that situation I'm red, white, and blue, you're Winnie the Pooh I smack your face and say, shock the bull So when you're alone and you think of masturbation Just call Paul for that situation The French is <laughs> Just piled. My flows are ill. How you like me now? Oh Damn. yeah! Damn. Yo, I, I I gotta say, um, I I really thought, you know, JF, no no uh offense, but your 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 rhymes are sort of like French uh, drama mean. Um, yes. and uh, I, I mean it, it was. It was pretty, I mean, you had some good lyrical moments, but G-Man brought the drama. G-Man brought the mother freaking drama, and I, I don't know. I, I, I think that's what rap battles are all about, frankly. What do you guys think? Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to compare when JF has this uh, well-done production and shit, and G-Man just kind of spits a few verses like... All right, that's it. I'm done. That's enough. Yeah, I feel unsatisfied. Yeah, it's like Wait, sickles and missiles and shit. I mean, I don't know. Other than referencing uh, Brett Keane's use that of the that word that situation, you I didn't see too much that clever. As you can see, G-Man seemed to just wing it at the last minute, which led JF to winning. Though G-Man claimed bias from the peasants' fan base and that he truly won, the part every gender could agree on within the peasants fan base is that CC really couldn't rap now. Oh. Yeah. Yo, guys, I, 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 I could spit a little rhyme if you guys want to hear it. Yeah, go for it. Do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, see, uh, this is where I realized that uh, my video doesn't actually have volume on it. Oh. Um, okay, but I'll, 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 uh, I'll do it anyway. I'll, I'll do an acapella like the G-Man. Right. Yo, know, here's a bunch of things that Jesus can't do. He can turn into me. He can turn into you. He can get you front row seats to Motley Crue or turn Mohammed into a Jew. He can do backflips on a crucifix. Tur uh, fuck, I fucking forget the lyrics. Okay, <laughs> fuck it. Right. Was that, was that, creationist hey. cat fail. Creationist <laughs> yeah. cat. Was that was that part of the song when you fucked up right there? Was that part? That, was that? Yes, it was all a part of my plan. Oh, um, okay. Actually, got it. actually, you know what? I, I got a uh, I'll uh, freestyle a Paul's ego rap. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Paul's ego. Paul's ego. Wearing sunglasses, smoking that weedo. He's got bigger titties than freaking Terrorito. And if he steps to me, I'll smoke him like Greedo. Damn. Okay. 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 Based. You 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 fucked me there. You bent me over and fucked me. I'm not gonna right. lie. Yeah. Well, you know that's that's. Bravo. Bravo. Oh God. Bravo. Oh, God. Who the fuck is that? Good job, creationist cat. You bent everybody over on that one. Oh, no. <laughs> it's Jim Ass, everyone. Oh, yeah, Jim. fuck. Jim, Jim Ass. Jim A. Oh, sorry. sorry. Jim A. Not Jim Ass. No. Jim A. But the A is for ass. You you oh, came God. up with another 20 grand, did you, you loser? Are you going to rap, Jim? Oh, shut up, you dingleberry. No. While Brett was leaving YouTube... A new great villain would start his tale of lies here on episode 181. Have you seen, uh, I believe his name is uh, Tommy Sotomayor? Sotomayor? 
Uh-uh. Uh, he, he he does videos on YouTube. Here's here's one of his videos. I'm sure you'll you'll like it. Oh, okay. Uh, Utah transsexual commits suicide by jumping in front of a dump truck after Facebook. Wow, the title's so long. After, after Facebook, Facebook goodbye, goodbye post. post. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Da 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 lame ass news, lame ass yeah. news, lame ass news. Yeah, we'll just wait till yeah, yeah. he actually appears on the screen. Jesus. Here. What's with all these horrible channels with these crazy long intros these days? Oh, he gets oh, a dude, he gets like a countdown. countdown. Is that really necessary? Happy football Sunday. Welcome to TNN News. Welcome. Welcome. You we got a story that's been trending. I saw this myself, one of the few stories I actually see myself since people normally send them to me. This story on, is what? about a transgender person. Okay. They don't need da, da, da. The da, person you see behind me. Name name is Ashley Hawkum. Make sure Hulk I'm saying Hulk Hulk. Hulk. Oh, Ashley Hallstorm. Professional as shit. Yeah, you know, if it's you're gonna, TNN. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna have this big crazy intro and like try to do this backdrop with this professional mic and shit, you can't then come on and be like, "Did about a, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah, oh, I mean, oh, uh, oh, 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 right, oh, 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 e, oh. <laughs> this picture, uh, y'all are seeing behind me is uh, a transsexual, uh. Individual? Tommy Sotomayor was a strangely popular YouTuber making videos from his rented mansions, with his boring and incoherent ramblings proving that he probably sold his brain to rent the place. One of these beliefs the peasants made fun of was his belief that slavery was in fact a choice. Oh, by the way, uh... It's outside. Yeah, and I didn't get to say uh, the title. It's Dear Black People, Stop Blaming Whites for Slavery When You Chose to Be Slaves. Yeah, they chose it. Yo, TJ! What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Tommy Sotomayor. Check yeah. It. Hey, Tommy. I was in a conversation time. with my man, Tommy. He'll probably come around here and jump in in a minute. But I was in a conversation with him about something. And I'm going to say something that is controversial. Because okay, you to give it. credit, we saw it somewhere else and heard about the thought of it. And it actually makes sense. And as you've probably been looking at the title, you know that the thing is saying... Slavery, yep. Black folks, slavery was an option. You yeah. chose slavery. Tommy's rebuttal consisted of showing off his garage and calling the peasants racist white boys, showing that Tommy was clearly a racist, but of course his form of racism was okay. The saga was just beginning with Tommy, and the skirmishes were just the beginning of an oncoming war. Previously on the Drunken Peasants Podcast... But yeah, we're not doing any regular shows next week. I want to give you guys something. Because I, me and Scotty will be out of town. But I mean, really, it's it, the only thing that's important is I'll be out of town. If Scotty was just out of town, we that's true. Doing the show. Show, show goes on. You know, we don't need Scotty. He's garbage. <laughs> TJ, I think you're projecting your feelings of being garbage. On well, you know, if I was truly the garbage one, then the show uh, would be able to go on without me, Scotty. Go on without me, Scotty. Go on without me, Scotty. The new and improved Drunken Peasants podcast would air December 11th, 2015, as finally, Scotty and TJ were gone. Coming to you live from your wood improved drunken peasants, now with 100% less TJ and Scotty, DPing the fuck out of the internet like never before. Dreams. Talking about how I like the house doggy situation. <laughs> Fucking deal. Jim, do you have Tourette's syndrome? Suck my balls! Fireball C! Testing one, two. Can you see my dinosaur? Shut the fuck up. You deadbeat piece of shit that doesn't pay child support. Ew! Oh shit! <laughs> Drop the fucking mic, bitch! And Shut up, you fucking loser! No. Jim, you're an ungrateful piece of shit! Y'all garbage! Okay. I just wanna no, no, be no, light! No, Y'all no, no. garbage! This reboot of the show now featured Ben, 
Scotty Cena, Paul Zigo, Jim Ass, Evan LeFavre, Pimp Monk, and Creationist Cat. This episode was highly praised and a great celebration for Evan's birthday. Even Brett came on to sing him a song. Dorn just ate some pie, put the fork <laughs> up to my lips, tasted it, and it tastes like shit. I said, woman, your life has just begun, but now you've gone and thrown it all away. Dorn. Something that you bought from the Save Mart. Bake that pie. Bake that pie. Cause nothing really matters. And then, and then, you know, there's a whole other one, but then I want to skip to the hook, okay? I'm going to okay. skip to the hook. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I see a little silhouette of mac and cheese. Got a moose, got a moose. Don't you better get cooking. Thunderbolts and lightning. Black eyes are so frightening. Galileo, 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 Galileo was a god believer situation. I'm just an individual. Nobody loves me. He's just an individual. What a poor family. Saving my house from my donation drives. Waterheads, waterheads, I make waterheads. Bismillah, no, my children, waterheads, waterheads. Bismillah, my children, waterheads, waterheads. Bismillah, my children, waterheads, waterheads, children, waterheads, waterheads, children, waterheads, waterheads. Waterhead. Heads, 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 heads. Don't, 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 Cause I'm a coffee leaver! <laughs> okay, that's it, that's it. I gotta go, guys. I got a French vanilla situation. But thank you for having me. Happy birthday, Evan the Flavor. And I hope to kiss your feet in heaven one day, sir. Sadly, though, the show was canceled after just one episode. And the peasants was renewed again with Scotty and TJ getting back on the show. During Paul's time on the show, he was going through a divorce with his wife. On episode 190, Paul's 14-year-old love child would appear on the show with him as the two podcast it from their motel room. Anyway, so this is, by the way, behind me here. This is Ashley. This is my girlfriend. Hi. Um, and she's going to hang out tonight and, and, and listen and be seen and not heard and look cute. Um, keep your fucking mouth shut. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> you fucking misogynist. Uh, no, read a bitch. Ashley apparently was peddled to Paul at a DP meetup, and she has been his slave ever since, only appearing a few times on Drunken Peasants, but has been seen more on Paul's Periscope and Hideology streams. Dusty was a popular YouTube atheist, who, as you can see, has appeared many times on the Drunken Peasants and was an alright guy. Modern Peasants fans, however, have seen the great fall of this YouTube atheist, and it is here that the decline of Dusty began, though it had been brewing in the background for some time. Dusty had already practically been no longer on YouTube, as his video making days were over, as he found he could put way much less effort into posting on Facebook, which gave him more times to do drugs, party, and get laid. Dusty was already getting shit from defending Jacqueline, and the Bible Reloaded had broken ties with him and no longer sold his shirts. On episode 195, Dusty would guest star and tell an elaborate and shocking story about him and Matt Dillahunty, a host of the Atheist Experience call-in show, getting into a feud at an atheist convention. Dillahunty fell more on the SJW side of the atheist community and didn't like the more scummy side of the atheist community with their vulgar humor. Dusty would then make this claim about Dillahunty's wife. Let's set up the, the background for this story. Okay, basically it all started with an atheist convention they had in Denver. Um, and I usually don't even like to go to these atheist conventions because they're pretty fucking boring. But anyway, I went to this one because they caught me and they're like, come on, we'll feed you, we'll get you in for free. So I go, and Matt Dillahunty was the lead speaker at this atheist convention. So I'm there with a couple of my friends. I walk in, um, and my friends are off doing something else. So I go sit down at a table. It's a big table, probably eight chairs around the table, and there's two other people at the table, and I sit there. And Matt Dillahunty's wife, Beth Presswood, sees me from across the room. She's sitting at a table, so she gets up from her table. She comes over, and she sits down beside me. 
and she just starts being a total fucking cunt to me. Just the fucking biggest bitch in the world, telling me that she hates my show and I'm disgusting. But to be honest with you, I had the feeling that she wanted my dick. And I'm just being honest about that. I'm not trying to be like, <laughs> or anything. Dusty would get into an argument with Matt's wife on Facebook over her racist meme she posted, and her defense was to call Dusty a troll. Matt and Dusty would go after each other over the meme, so Dusty made his arguments and claims on this episode. And atheist YouTubers OnStar would claim, in chat, live, that Dusty was lying. Dill Hunty came on episode 197 to dispute Dusty, and claimed the desire of them wanting to have a threesome with Dusty was ridiculous. Anyway, so uh, you're basically here because uh, a week and a half ago, something like that, we had Dusty on the show. He was talking about an incident that happened, I think, on Facebook. Am I correct on that? I, I guess that's, I mean, part of it. Um, part of yeah, it? There... I mean, I, I, we already heard his story. Uh, why don't you just tell us your side of events if you even want to talk about it? Yeah, and it's, it's really weird because at the end of the day, this is going to end up being little more than he said, she said, or he said, he said. But Sure. And there are people who are going to believe Dusty no matter what I say, and people who are going to believe me no matter what Dusty says. And, I, you know, I've debated, you know, whether I should even bother addressing this. But there were a few things that were just kind of over the top and a few things that people were really confused about. Because from my perspective, this wasn't about a meme or anybody's uh, position or opinion about a meme at all. Okay. <laughs> I don't give a rat. I mean, I'm happy to discuss the meme, and and actually, I responded to Dustin when he first asked me. Uh, I I don't care. Uh, this idea that oh Matt blocked Dusty because he has a different opinion about a meme is fucking bizarre. I I ended up blocking Dusty because he wouldn't respect boundaries. Um, but to kind of address what he said and go back, uh, I guess I'll try to make it as short as possible. But I mean, who knows. Uh, so we first met Dusty in uh, August of 2014 at a convention in the Denver area that he came to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dusty kind of told his version. I'll, I'll give you my perception or my, uh, my, my view of what actually happened uh, because it seems like there was this uh, sex fueled fantasy version that Dusty came up with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did say that. Yeah, way. in Dusty's version, your wife has the hots for Dusty, like hardcore. Yes. But, I... can on but this can only be manifested through hatred and, of him and, as a and, person. And, and he suggested that you'd be okay with it, too. Well, since nobody's gonna, <laughs> since nobody's gonna ask, uh, is that true? It, does no. she have the hots for him? No. no okay. No, I'm just Dusty. He would definitely know. It wouldn't have had to been. Uh, oh, she was picking at me like on the playground. So I think maybe she wanted my cock. No, he'd fucking know. <laughs> for now, Dusty would still have decent relations with the peasants and a somewhat shaky relationship with the fan base. Episode 193: A popular gay conservative, Milo Yiannopoulos, guest starred, leading to the show getting its highest live audience. This episode would mark an important moment for Paul's ego, as before, many wanted salt with their fries. But this episode would divide fans, and lead to many calling for Paul to be fired, as he childishly interrupted and argued with Milo, coming across of just saying things to disagree with Milo during the episode. Not on the yeah, scale you, know, you, know, you know what? By the way, uh, Milo... Let me, let me finish, let me finish the point. Hold on, Milo, let Milo finish, and I'll, uh, I want to interject something afterwards. Let me finish the point on Muslims. This is radically different. Demonstrate this. All right, Paul. This is I'm not gonna, like Paul, the Irish. Hold on. This is hold okay, on, Paul. Ahead. You. I'm just gonna let you know. You're gonna say your piece, and then we're gonna move on from this. Yeah, I. I do want to talk okay. about. Hold on, how, Ben. Let's okay. let Paul right. do his uh, response. Uh, yeah. This you, one was great. Hear me now? Yes. I, yeah, we could. Okay, sorry. Like, fuck, All dude. Right. The, That's the, right, I know TJ. I know TJ closed the book on fucking religion, but as I was speaking, the fucking internet here died. I, I, I want to say one thing. I think it's kind of telling. Oh, God. After this, it was clear that Paul wasn't the best thing ever, and a large portion of the fan base from here on out would trash Paul. Paul would soon take his punishment, though. Episode 200 aired on January 29th, 2016. And much like episode 100, many guests were on, like Pimp Monk, G Time Johnny, and Anthony Fantano, who praised the video game underground commercial that was recently played on the show that the peasants fell in love with. All right, check this out, Anthony, and Here then go, let guys. us know what you think. Give us the Anthony Fantano treatment with this. Dude, one. I will. I will. Play the it. The needle drop. Oh. Oh, hold on.
There we go. That's a sick shirt, Ben. Video game underground has the best video games in town. Video game underground has the best prices on games around. Video game underground has the best video games. All right. Pure brilliance, Dude. right? What the fuck, man? I can understand brilliance. why you would watch that while you're high, because that's like some stoner metal shit. Yeah, like, that, yeah, that was, bitch! That was some stoner metal shit. Like, that was some slow, heavy sludge metal, like doom metal shit. Like, they were clearly on some Black Sabbath shit with, with that song. Here at the end of the show, TJ punished Paul for his outbursts and fisted him. It's going to start with two fingers. Two, two, all right? Immediately two. Because look, if I start at okay. one, it's going to take forever to get up to a fist. All right? Two fingers. That's going to happen. I'm looking at Paul's brown eye right the oh fuck now. Oh, my God, uh, dude, please. This is not a fucking joke. This is not a fucking publicity stunt. I'm doing this for fucking uh, real. I don't care what you guys this think. This is disgusting. I'll be honest with you guys. This Shut is up, disgusting. Scotty. Fuck you, TJ. Fuck you, Scotty. <laughs> Ow. Okay, hey, look, I'm, this is going to uh, happen. Some sense into you. We already talked about this, guy. This is going to happen. Just I know you it, have man. your objections. I don't give a shit. This is my fucking show. I'm the amazing atheist. Fuck you, amazing fucking retard. Shh. I'll fucking slap that shit you off your face. You just describe what's happening. All, All right. right. Paul. Well, go ahead and do it, talker. Shut up, bitch. Ow. Ow. Talk is cheap. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, oh fuck, dude. Slow, uh, slow down, TJ. Slow. Oh, I looked. Oh, my God. I wish I was slowing down. Why did I look? Stop, faggot. Slow down, That dude. is fucking oh, horrifying. You're going to fucking tear my asshole. This is horrifying. I cannot believe they're really doing this. I'm going to three fingers now. I cannot believe you guys fingers. are doing this. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh, oh, fuck, man. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Shut up, Paul. Okay. Fuck you, fat Ow. I don't give a fuck what you think, bitch. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's fucking You ain't nothing but my fucking pig slave at this fucking point. Oh, my God. Okay, Why are you doing this? Shut up, Scotty. Why are you doing this? Shit. I just got to breathe. I don't need to talk to you. I just got to breathe. Okay. You don't need to breathe. You should have calmed down, TJ. What are you doing, man? You got out of hand. You got, I talked to you guys. You got out of hand, you TJ. You said this was cool, all right? Oh. You said this shit was fun. We didn't fun. think you were going to act like this, though, man. Calm down, oh. TJ. Walk away from me, Scotty. Calm down, TJ. I know what the fuck uh, is bad. Uh, uh, you don't know what's bad. Right, I'm going full fish. Fuck this shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. No. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. He's oh, gone. Oh, there's blood everywhere. Oh, fucking God, dude. Stop. Oh, my God. God. Is Paul ben, alive? Ben, stop him! However, Paul wouldn't learn his lesson and would continue to divide fans, showing that the peasants had indeed gone through a salt crisis. And I've been doing a backwards a Duke since 1992. Salty Paul, round as a ball. And I'm fat cause my back is bent No telling where my couch from my Kia went Salty Paul, round as a ball